Welcome to Hillary Topper On Air, the podcast you can't afford to miss. Gwen Jorgensen was a CPA. In 2016, she became an Olympic gold medalist and an immediate hero of mine. Today, we're going to hear her story from two very special guests. I'm Hillary Topper, and this is Hillary Topper On Air. I am so excited to be speaking with Elizabeth and Nancy Jorgensen, authors of Go Gwen Go, A Family's Journey to Olympic Gold. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So Elizabeth and Nancy, tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do day to day. Um, this is Elizabeth, and I am Gwen's older sister. I am a teacher and also a writer, but I am um, into music and fitness as well. And in my spare time, I like to work out with a trainer and I play in a community orchestra. And this is Nancy and I'm Gwen's mom. I also was a teacher for many years. For 30 years, I taught in the same high school where Elizabeth is teaching now. And I taught high school choir. And I retired in 2015 and got back into some of my, the things that I uh, had an interest in while I was teaching, like writing and doing some more music on my own and, um, and also trying to stay physically fit in retirement. <laughs> awesome. All right. So the two of you wrote a book, Go Gwen Go, A Family's Journey to Olympic Gold. Can you tell us about the book and Gwen's story? Sure. This is Nancy again. Um, Gwen was uh, obsessed with swimming when she was young and then pursued it at the college level, got into some running, but ultimately got her, her license in, as a CPA and she was working as an accountant. And USA Triathlon noticed her background in swimming and running and recruited her for triathlon. Um, and from there, it was, it was a very quick rise to success. Um, within two years, she had qualified for the 2012 Olympics, but got a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, but you know, uh, we refused to be defeated by that because out of 60 some women, she got the flat tire, she took five minutes to change it, and she still came in 38th. And wow. did, didn't give up, you know, just, in fact, the final, the final leg of that, of the run in the triathlon, she sprinted to the end, sprinted desperately for 38th place. Wow. Um, and she, she says if that hadn't happened, she's not sure that she would have achieved the success in 2016 because um, it, it forced her to rededicate herself to training, to find some really top-notch group to be with. Um, and so for the next four years, she de get dedicated herself to the 2020 games and, um, and 2016, won. 2016, sorry, 2016 games. And she won. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing. I watched it and I was in total awe the entire time. I'm a triathlete. I started triathlons late in life. I mean, I'm in my fifties. So <laughs> I started when I was like 53 or 54 and watching Gwen was so inspirational. Um, and I'm really excited to read this book. So talk to me a little bit about what compelled you to write this book and when you decided to do it. I think a lot of people along the way were asking us like, how is this possible? How does your sister go from a CPA to a world and Olympic champion? And we knew that there was a story there. And because mom and I were writers, we knew uh -huh. that that's the medium that we wanted to use to tell our family's story. Um, and we were, you know, we were noticing things and learning things along the way. And so much of Gwen's story was surprising to us that she needed to surround herself in a daily performance environment. The nutritional needs, the sponsorship needs, um, all of that stuff really is fascinating. And we knew that people would be interested in reading about it. Um, we also had this unique idea of telling an Olympian's story from the family's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this really is an insider's view at what happens to a family when somebody achieves at that high of a level. Right. Right. And how does it really affect the family? I mean, how, you know, were you guys there at all of the different events? Talk um, a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, my husband and I, 
um, we tried to go to as many events as we could. And we had this history of following our girls around whenever they did sporting events. But, you know, when it goes from the local Y or, or the local course to <laughs> New Zealand <Right>. and Australia, <laughs> we obviously couldn't get to every yeah. place. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but, you know, um, it's, it was a life that I never dreamed we would be doing. Um, when, she, when she raced in London in 2011, it was one of her very first WTS races, and we thought, well, you know, we may never get to Europe again. Let's go to London and see this race. Yeah. And as it turned out, we went to Europe several more times because she won that, or she took second in that race and qualified for the Olympics. And, um, and so in that way, you know, I'm kind of a homebody. I, I, I've never really enjoyed a lot of travel, mm -hmm. but I've learned to like it because we wanted to see her in as many events as possible. And so we kind of made that lifestyle change and, um, and, and saw a lot of races. Must be incredible. You, you, you both must be, feel so incredibly proud of her watching her through this journey. Yeah, I think we are. And, um, you know, I think the, the focus sometimes is that the whole family is, is focused on Gwen when in reality, Gwen lives, you know, across the country from us and Elizabeth is in town and we're also very proud of Elizabeth. And um, she and I spend a lot of time together um, yeah. writing this book, which is focused on Gwen. But I think, the, I think the family as a whole is the focus. And no matter what one person is doing, we kind of shift focus um, to recognize whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. And I think Gwen is equally as proud of our accomplishments in the story that we've told in the book and having our memoir out um, as we are proud of her accomplishments. And yeah. that really is a theme that comes through in the book too, that we just, we support each other no matter what the goal is. I love that. That's so awesome. So what can readers expect from this book? And what's the central theme? I mean, uh, I'm thinking, you know, as you're talking, it's, it's really about family. I, I think it really is about family. And um, you know, when, we, when we first wrote the book and we were, we were marketing it, um, I, I think a lot, of, a lot of successful books or books that sell a lot sometimes have um, a tragedy that's mm -hmm. overcome you know, mm -hmm. on the way. And, and this just isn't that. And so I think the theme, um, a lot of it is about a positive story, um, about it taking a lot of people who helped Gwen along the way, it takes a village, um, you know, from her high school running coach, who was instrumental in getting her um, on the college running team, to USA Triathlon, who recruited her, um, to all the, the coaches and the, and the sponsors and everybody that, that helped along the way. Um, we, we recognize that no one person can make it to Olympic gold with, without all that help. And, and I think that is a theme. Um, and just, just that it, it is a positive story. So talk to me a little bit. I, I'm actually curious about what area of the country you live in. Uh, we live in, in the Midwest. We're in Wisconsin, close to Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Um, and that, you know, I, I think swimming, probably when Gwen got obsessed with swimming, it's a sport you can do year round. You can be indoors. Um, when, she, when she first started triathlon, uh, that was a challenge to live in Wisconsin and try to run on the ice and Lake, Michi <laughs> Lake Michigan freezes over. So you can't be doing any open water swimming. Um, right. and, and you know, that, that spurred her when she really got serious after 2012 and decided she was going to do this seriously. Um, that was a big part of the decision, I think, to move to Australia where the weather was better and she was, you know, with a, a training group and, it, it, you know, location means a lot when you're training for something that, uh, that involves open water. Huge. Now she's shifted gears, right? And she's now just running. She's not doing triathlons anymore. Yeah. After she won the gold medal in Rio, she felt like that her dreams had been achieved and she mm. had reached her potential for a triathlon and she really was motivated by what's next and mm -hmm. what other potential do I have that I haven't yet explored. And so she declared um, shortly after winning in Rio that she wanted to transition to the marathon. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's been training out in Portland for that and had a little bit of setback um, in terms of like an injury mm -hmm. and realized that um, the marathon won't happen in 2020, but She's still going to chase it, hopefully in 2024, but um, right now she's focusing on track and field. Awesome. And, 
And since 2016, she's also had a child. She's got her son, uh, two-year-old Stanley. So, you know, that takes some months out of training too. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before we move on, I wanna say, I have to just thank our sponsors. Um, please support our sponsors and tell them that you heard about them on Hillary Topper on Air. Special thanks to the Russo Law Group, Strain Print, the Profit Express, and Fortune Art by Literary. So back to you guys. Um, what other things besides, so tell us a little bit about um, Gwen, her new child, and how she's juggling everything, and how you guys are juggling this whole, whole thing with the book. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's easier for me because I'm retired. Elizabeth is still working full time. So, uh, you know, it's hard to get full family get togethers. But my husband and I get out to Portland, oh, I would say five or six times a year. Uh, when Gwen and her husband need to travel, sometimes they'll call us up and say, you know, uh, we need to be out of town for four days. Can you come and babysit? And mm -hmm. so we move in and, um, and it, you know what, I, I wish she were closer, but she isn't. Um, I think as far as having the baby, um, you know, anybody who's a mother knows that children take time. Mm -hmm. And she's, um, she's really devoted to Stanley and spends as much time with him as she can. She does have the help of her husband, who's a full-time stay-at-home dad. And, you know, she credits him for a lot of her success because he has always been the one that does the shopping and the cooking and concentrates on the home so that she can concentrate on, on her professional sport. Um, but on the other hand, you know, Stanley takes time, but she also has said that it, it's given her perspective. She comes home from a tough day of training and this little guy is there and, and she realizes what's really important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's the family and it's the children and not necessarily maybe that, that one workout that gave you a tough time that day. That's so true. So do you have any anecdotes about Gwen or training or just something that happened with your whole family that you want to share with us? Oh boy, Elizabeth, you're going to take that one? I don't know. What are you thinking? <laughs> That's so wide open. <laughs> it is. I think, you know, some of my favorite scenes in the book is when we are together as a family. And, you know, Gwen, when she races, she's there for work. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to respect that, but she also really tries to make time for everyone who's flown in or ridden the train for hours to come and see her race. And you get a glimpse of that in the book, um, what it's like to celebrate with the world champion after, you know, a big, huge race or um, just smaller moments. You know, I'm thinking of times when Gwen had to go to an event and I ended up styling her hair in a, in a bathroom um, in a hotel and you know just those little glimpses mm. of you I don't think people maybe you know they um, they don't realize that professional athletes are still people and they still make time for family and you just get a little glimpse into what that looks like for us mm. sounds and like I, a wonderful book yeah God, I'm sorry Nancy oh that's okay I was just going to say that you know after all of what's happened um, Gwen is still Gwen and she still does some of the things that she did when she was younger and and Elizabeth too you know um, Gwen is very much an advocate for herself and she knows when she needs to put her feet up and she knows what she likes and she'll come we'll be there or she'll be here and she'll she'll still um, you know ask for what she needs dad can you get me some ice or can you get me some water no ice um, or whatever whatever it is that she needs in the moment and Elizabeth is still the one that is the personality in the family and we love it when she travels with us because everything is just so fun when she's around when the girls were growing up nancy did you advocate for fitness for them to to do swimming to you know do track to cycle whatever i mean was that something that you encouraged them to do as young girls when, when the girls were little, my husband and I made a conscious decision to make sure that they were always doing one sport and one music. Hmm. And, and so both girls played violin through their senior year in high school. In fact, Elizabeth nice. still plays now in a, in a community orchestra. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, the choices were up to them. And so Elizabeth played basketball, ran track. 
Gwen did a little bit of track, but just kind of fell in love with swimming. And that was fine. You know, she could have chosen soccer. She could have chosen whatever. Um, we just wanted them to have one of each. And mm -hmm. I and, love it. Yeah. Love it. I mean, and that's something, I mean, for <clears throat> families today who have young children, would that be an advice that you would give them? I would. Um, and, you know, we were never, we never dreamed we'd have an Olympic athlete in the family. That was mm -hmm. not a goal. You know, you hear about some parents who are grooming their kids for mm -hmm. professional sports. And mm -hmm. it just, it just never even was on our radar that, that we would, that we were raising somebody who would, who would achieve at that level. And, um, you know, we wanted them to do well academically, spent a lot of time on the spelling lists and the science projects. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, in, you know, we also realized that, um, they had some free time and that sports and music would give them some good friends to hang out with. Mm -hmm. And that was the priority. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I think Gwen would say that she picked up a lot of that that's influenced her today from those early years. Just that, you know, you go to practice every day and you put in the work and, you know, you, there's no pressure, to, especially from mom and dad to do well. It was just try your best and whatever mm -hmm. happens, We'll be there to cheer you up and yeah. um, you know that tomorrow's a new day and you'll just go back tomorrow and you'll keep trying. And she implements some of that, those same things in her training. And even with her son, um, he now is very into music and she's, you know, encouraging him to try out different instruments in addition to his, his bike that he rides. Aww. Very cute. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing with me. Um, could you tell people how they can get in touch with you or learn more about your book, Go Gwen Go, A Family's Journey to Olympic Gold? Go Gwen Go is available wherever books are sold. So you could get them at a local bookstore or your library or Amazon or anywhere you like to buy books. Um, you can contact us through our websites. Mine is lizjorgensen.weebly.com. And mine Mom. is, yep. Yep, mine is nancyjorgensen.weebly.com. Awesome. Well, thank you both, Elizabeth and Nancy, for being on the show. You, you were fantastic. And well, I thank wanna, you. And I want to thank our sponsors, the Russo Law Group, Strain Print, the Profit Express, and Fortune I'll Find Jewelry. And last but not least, I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in. If you want more information on this show or any other show, visit our website at hillarytopperonair.com or you can find us on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and now even on Amazon Alexa. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.